finding one and I happened to while I was pricing them out my, my first objective was to try to get a, a, uh, a saw like what they carry here at the store so uh, I had seen this at the woodworking show and knew that Peachtree carried it and had talked to the uh, the Bosch rep at the, at the show about the, the various benefits of this saw and thought it sounded good and then when uh, when we found a real bargain on one, we, uh, we jumped on it. So uh, armed with that, we, we now got a, a saw, but in order to use one of these things, uh, usually you have to have it on some kind of a stand. If, uh, if any one of these uh, young guys wants to come up here and try to, try to lift this thing up, I mean, the various miter saws that I've owned over the years, uh, it seems like each each successive year they get heavier, and each new model that comes out gets a little heavier. So finally, uh, I think they've achieved uh, uh, some sort of uh, milestone here with Bosch. It takes two people to move this thing. <laughs> so uh, one of the things that that you usually encounter with a with a saw like this is that your material is usually much longer than the bed of the saw. So if it's, you know, if you've got this much material out here, you're over the center of gravity and the material is going to want to sag down if you're trying to just do a, a, a straight cut, you know, just to uh, square up the end to start things off. So if you're going to use it on some place other than a workbench, you need some sort of support out there. Uh, using it on a workbench is uh, is usually not too desirable because the handle is up so high you got to get your arm up there. And as Rob was telling me the other day, he and Hans had 600 and some odd cuts to make to for some project. <coughs> he was wondering why his arm was so sore the next day. <laughs> that was because he'd uh, he'd done all those on on his chop saw, which was a bit high. So that kind of leads us into, you know, if you're going to design a cart for this thing, uh, you know, where do you start? What are the parameters? So the first thing that I wanted to do is find something that uh, looked close to, to what I wanted. Um, this was a design that I did oh, two or three years ago with a with a chop saw stand, and I like the I like the effect of it, but there were a few things that needed. Uh, needed some correction on there because the, the wings didn't stay adjusted as much as I would like and there were you know a few other features to the thing so one of the things that I discovered in this was in the height between the table of the saw and the stand itself was a half inch different than this saw here so when you uh, when you go back lay a measure there, this, this winds up being about uh, three and three quarter. I think the other saw was uh, either three and a quarter or three and a half. So I wasn't going to be able to just uh, straight out duplicate the plan from the other, the other stand. The other factor that I, that I noticed is when you measure the end to end, on the saw, this is about 26 and a half, which was uh, over an inch longer than the DeWalt model. Uh, let me let me move on here to 
what this uh, stand looks like with the wings down. Uh, this is what it looks like you know, when you're ready to store it. The, the length was the showstopper on this thing. So I thought, well, we might as well just uh, go back to the basics and just use the principle of that, that other saw and go up from there. In doing that, what I, what I came up with is, okay, let's take a, take a picture of this saw and lay it on the minimum piece of wood that it would require to make this thing work. So that minimum piece of, uh, piece of wood to put that saw on to start this cart would be 30 and a quarter wide by 21 and a half deep. So that will, uh, that will be adequate to provide for the footprint for the saw. And then uh, with some uh, pseudo-scientific calculations here, we decided that the optimum height off the floor was, uh, was about 32 and uh, 32 and a third, I'd say, roughly. 32 and a quarter. So uh, that is basically what you start with. Now, if you can use a little imagination and imagine elevating this thing off the, off the floor, you know, by itself, it'll, uh, it'll work just fine that way. But uh, reality says you can't, uh, you can't stick with that. So you need to start coming up with uh, how are we going to hold this thing off the floor. So the, the next stage is, okay, we need a base and some wheels. So we had that next stage, and I thought, well, what better to, to hold the top up what better would be than uh, use the same size piece of material for the bottom. So I did that, put some wheels on it. Then I started trying to figure out, okay, what do we need to do to hold these two apart? Because they, they obviously aren't going to stay there by themselves. So the height between the two now turns out to be 27 and a half. And then in order to come up with uh, sides to hold the top up, I'll put a couple of pieces of plywood in between to hold the two, the two sides up. So then we go ahead and make those two parts, and you wind up with uh, sides. You put a back on, and then the other, the other thing that I like to add to something like this, even though there is a back, I like to put some sort of a spreader somewhere on the front of a piece. You know, because of the back being there, that's going to prevent it torquing in the back, but you can still get some stresses going on the front edge to cause it to work. By putting the spreader in here, that'll that'll restrict that movement quite a bit. So now you've got your basic platform. So that, in and of itself, will hold the uh, hold the saw. You can you can put it on there. You can wheel it around at this point. Okay. Next, we'll get into. In case you hadn't noticed it yet, there is some uh, some space here between the sides and the edge of the top, similarly on the bottom. Seems like a whoops, but there is an intention there. It is by design. And we start to get into that here. Now, since I like the, the wing concept, I decided, okay, we'll take, uh, we'll extend this wing concept and begin designing that on there. So we float a couple of wings out there at the right height to match the height of the table of the saw on top of the platform that it's sitting on. So that separation winds up being four inches. So now we've got to figure out some way to uh, hold that thing up there. Uh, we move on to the next stage. Decided to wrap some material around it to reinforce this top and to give us some place to uh, mount the, uh, the wings to the, to the top of the saw platform to be able to hinge it. And again, I stuck some reinforcement in there to, uh, to help stabilize the whole thing. Okay, now we move on to the next stage. And here's where that gap that I pointed out to you on the, on the first part is to where we use that. Stick a filler piece in there, which is a, 
a boss that, that winds up getting glued in place to permit you to use uh, conventional butt hinges to uh, hinge this thing. I figured a, a butt hinge is nice and rugged. You know, it, it's really hard to tear one of those things up as opposed to something more delicate like a piano hinge. It's fairly easy to rip one of those off. So now we, we're beginning to have the elements of uh, having the wings integrated to this uh, chop saw stand. And we'll move on to the next stage here. Need some sort of way to keep the wings up. You know, we got we got one end supported. We now need to figure out a way to support this other end out here. So what I did is I made a, a wing support or a wing strut to uh, allow this thing to stay up. And one more step is a is a support there. I added one more support piece underneath the wing out there that winds up being the rest for the top to go on this adjustable block that goes on the wing strut. That then allows you to, the wing itself here is supposed to be completely horizontal to the table. It starts out being being the same height from this table to the, to the wing over here. So now all you have to do is adjust for elevation. So all I did is use a simple uh, carriage bolt right here that has a, a threaded insert that goes into here so that you can achieve some up and down elevation there to be able to level the, uh, the wings of the platform. Okay, the next stage that I did was uh, now that we have the thing such that the wings are now supported, one of the things that I wanted to do is <coughs> it's a real handy receptacle right here in this open hole in the bottom so that any small cutoffs and so forth that you have from cutting, cutting something off using the miter saw to just throw the scraps underneath there. My experience with the one that I showed you the picture of is that all too often the, the pile gets a little high and stuff starts tumbling out. <laughs> so I said, all right, we'll put a removable dam in here. So I fabricated a, a dam to go across the opening there and some sliding dados in there to be able to remove the dam to get the material out when the time comes. Okay, this shows the, uh, the overall dimensions of the completed project. In other words, with the wings up, the thing winds up being 84 and a quarter long. You know, if you go to try to store that thing, it's that's going to take up a whole lot of space in your shop. And the working platform up there is 36 inches, which is about countertop height in the kitchen, which is a good good working height. It has been for years, so, so that was a good thing. With the wings down, we now uh, now have a width of 49 inches, a whole lot smaller, easier to store. That's part of why I like that uh, that design. Now then we come to this the other half of this overhang that was hip up here on the top. And we now have a, we're dealing with the overhang on the bottom. It turns out that the combination of those two are the area that contains the wing struts. When the wing struts are folded backwards, when I spin it around this side, the, uh, the entire wing mechanism swings around tight to the cabinet, makes it a lot easier to store. Originally I was going to cut that part off until somebody pointed out to me that, uh, you know, if you cut that part off, you know, where are those wing struts going to hide? Uh, mm, yeah, good point. Okay, so this winds up being a, an exploded view diagram of what, what all these parts look like. So this is what, you get ready to start building this thing, and this, these are the, the parts that you got to cut. The closest I've ever come to, to tipping the thing over is when you get lazy and start stacking material on the end of that wing. It'll get, uh, it'll get a little light <laughs> on the opposite side when you go to, that, go to doing that. But with this particular saw, the additional weight of it is a significant factor. One of the things that, that intrigued me is I was talking to the Bosch rep about that saw is that uh, he pointed out to me, I hadn't observed it on my own, he said you can slam this thing back against the wall and use it that way. And I thought, ooh, for my shop, that's, that's important. What I skipped over and didn't mention here was the, the fact that I'd added a, a fence on one of these drawings here. I, I failed to notice a, a difference between the two drawings, but that was it. it was, Stick a uh, stick a fence in there, and use what I like to use is a uh, one of these big construction levels to 
lay that thing against the back of the saw and then draw the fence up to that and screw it down so that uh, when you go to cut up a you know, sizable piece of wood, you've got a good uh, good reference point there to get the thing square to be able to cut it. What size casters are you using? Uh, I believe that's a five inch caster. I picked one of the uh, one of the bigger casters that one of the you know, fully articulated caster that uh, Peachtree carries here. Each wheel will lock when you when you start using the thing and and uh, moving it around and so forth. It uh, it has a tendency to want to roll away on you unless you lock the casters. At least two of them. Okay. If there's no other questions, that's about all I've got for today. Thank you.